Yeah, I showed them my girl, I showed them I do it, man. Hey, yeah, pull up on nice and I do it like Superman. Usually, I hate touching this kind of stuff, but this system, it's so seamless, it's so easy. I'm just packing all this stuff up. We had a crazy day, none of this was planned, but the fact that we just kind of had all this stuff you know, in the bags ready to go, it simplified everything. And we end up doing like a really cool epic roller shot that we didn't know we were gonna get today. But instead of me just constantly vouching for this and saying like, oh, why this is so much more better than other options uh, on the market, I wanna bring in the guys and have them also explain to you what this like does, like how it just kind of frees your mind. Connor over here does a lot of commercial solo operating stuff on gimbals. Kofi does a lot of like team rigging with like the tilt ring thing. Instead of me guys just like constantly just talking about this, just screaming in the camera about yeah. why this is actually something we've been wanting for years and it's saving time and effort and money and yada, yada, yada. You guys tell them what I'm back to say. To start off with the solar operators, I think this is gonna be the most exciting thing and that's the focus grip. A lot of times we like shooting handheld. Everyone's starting to invest into cinema lenses because cinema lenses, you can grow into them. I'm obsessed with anamorphic. Sometimes it's not realistic to use on a shoot when I'm doing solo operation because having too manual focus is just too much of a gripe. This thing literally is the thing that we all originally wanted when LiDAR was first introduced from DJI. We all thought, oh, all of our lens could be autofocus. But you know, obviously with the Quartz, it had to be on a gimbal. You couldn't program in, yada, yada, yada. This is real now. This thing is just, this This thing's amazing. As in that Cowboy Spec commercial, pretty much every scene that we shot, we had a handheld unit basically with this setup because I absolutely love handheld. And now just be able to have autofocus anamorphics, this is gonna be glued to all my rigs now. This setup for solo operators who do a lot of handheld stuff, this is gonna be a dream come true. Just cause you're using this, doesn't mean you have to actually use the autofocus on here. Put it back in the mounted focus mode and everybody who has like a focus system going on, you don't have to use that anymore. You can now just get this and you're knocking out two birds at one stone. You're gonna have your whole focus motor set up and these are very torquey, powerful focus motors now, but you can also put it into AMF mode and all of a sudden you have autofocus. Connor shoots a lot of solo stuff. He's starting to get more into cinema glass and everything. I'm trying to give him an anamorphics. Kofi shoots a shit ton of solo operator stuff and he's getting into more anamorphics, but he has a bunch of cinema glass too. So I want to get them talking about this and uh, I want to get their reactions of using this first though. Yeah. Okay. Okay, wait, hang on. Let me give you this mic first. All right, we're locked in. Yellow? Yeah. Oh, no way. Okay. So it has total face tracking. And so if Kofi broke frame right now, just walk right past him. Okay, so it did track him still. So this is the important thing with AMF mode. You can hold the dial. So when he crosses. Oh, right. Yo. Anybody who's scared of getting into cinema lenses, I think this is now the best introduction. Cause again, you're now getting an actual focus motor setup, but you're also getting all the focus. This just takes away all of the unknowns about it, right? So there's lots that you could, I mean, this is, maybe not the solution for everything, but there's really no reason not to mess with this because you're gonna get a way nicer image, but with all the niceties of autofocus. Kofi, you wanna try this? Okay, so I have used the Focus Pro a couple times, but I've used it on spherical lenses. I use the DZOs and Nisi Athenas and a couple others. I haven't used this on anamorphic just yet, but like you even just looking through the monitor, you can tell how quick and responsive it is. Like it's going right now. It's starting to look for people. What I like about this, even if I point this at Connor, like it looks, Actually, this looks really dope. Yeah. <laughs> this actually looks yeah, dope. Like, oh, let's roll on that one. Like, that looks amazing. And the fact that it works on anamorphic lenses is a big one. And it's locked in on that. That's actually wild. A lot of people, when they want to buy cinema lenses, like, oh, I have to lose autofocus. Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah, like, you got to suck it up and figure it out. Or, like, have a focus puller. Yeah. Now you don't have to. But, like, it's not one of those, like, regular LiDAR systems where, like, it only works center frame. It doesn't track anything. Yeah. And you kind of have to deal with those things. It works like an autofocusing system would. Yeah. And albeit, like, you have, what, 60 feet? of distance i'm like yeah. i'm not really gonna be shooting 60 feet away from stuff all the time yeah so like this is this is more than fine like this is more than great well what's cool about this guy is that the screen that it's on doesn't necessarily mimic the focal length that you're shooting on yeah. so it's width in terms of what it can focus on might catch so say you're shooting at 65 right yeah if connor walks out of the frame the lighter is still picking that up in the vertical yeah. space even though it's a tighter shot when it's the spherical lenses you're like oh okay like i've seen a spherical looking autofocus i'm not that impressed when we look at anamorphic i'm like oh 
Oh it's, no way! This unlocks. breaks the mind. Well, it, it unlocks so many it. things now because now there's so many cinema lenses that are affordable. Yeah. And that barrier to buy them are gone now. Yeah. And even if you get some of the cheaper stuff, you could still use it with one of these yeah. guys, which is dope. Like usually the look I'm used to when shooting handheld anamorphics is like a floaty uh, focus, where it's going in and out, and you're trying to keep up with the subject. This now just looks like regular. Like it looks like you have an AC running focus for you it's yeah. freaking weird so guys for our next setup here i met back up with steve again he's the country music artist and i didn't have a team with me so i took the rs4 pro the whole lidar system and i think some people would traditionally think oh let me just put a like my regular monitor on there so i can monitor my thing i put the dji wireless monitor on there because again the whole hub situation wirelessly getting a video feed without all these extra cables no extra transmission i was able to also see what the lidar is doing so this setup right here actually gives us a wireless monitor setup on here, but that's not the important part. The important part is we get all of our LiDAR information directly in front of us. So I'm in wide mode and you can see that it's picking up my face right there. If I move, the gimbal will actually track me. You can see it engaging on the LiDAR on here as well you can see the focus box. But if you don't have this to see the LiDAR here on the external monitor, you have to pay attention to the LiDAR back of here, which, you know, it does work, but sometimes it is too small. And then if you're doing the briefcase, then it'll kind of get in your way. So this setup here, like, again, this is usually the setup that I would use for our roller shots or for our team and crew, but this actually comes in handy for this whole setup here. So, and then from here, you can change all your LiDAR adjustments. You can turn it on and off. You put it in autofocus mode or manifocus mode, like whatever you gotta do, you'll be able to do it from here. Hey guys, so you saw kind of my obnoxious uh, solo gimbal operator setup. I'm gonna show you guys how I rigged up the hub and why the hub's so important because the hub is where it starts expanding into more teamwork setup. This is kind of like the secret weapon to this whole setup here. It comes with two of these screws as well. So you can screw it underneath the transmission so it's not dangling. That's the other thing is, again, there's only a couple other LiDAR options out there and they're dumb options, basically. That's the most simplistic way I could explain it. They don't have all the tracking features. They're very limited. They're, they kind of only work with certain focal lengths and, and the LiDAR has to be set perfectly. It's just the DJI stuff's far superior and intelligent compared to everything else out there. So there's really no comparison to the one DJI's LiDAR and the LiDAR grip over here. But if you want to do wireless transmission with any of your gimbal setups, you have to figure out how to get the transmission connected to the gimbal and how to power it, how to get all the cables on there without it getting in the way. Any little cable getting caught, any little thing dangling, it's going to throw off your gimbal and it could just, you know, make it go to sleep if it's putting too much friction on it. It's just this whole setup, everything's made together. It's like it's, it's made to work together. So there's nothing really, you know, getting in your way. Again, imagine, there's no other LiDAR option on the market that's nearly as, as usable as this thing is. Any other manufacturer's focus motors, you have to figure out how to power them. Battery on there, or you have to put a battery on the focus motor itself, put a V-mount somewhere on your setup, and then plug everything into there. Figure out how to, to mount the transmission on here. DJI is giving us the whole solution. Truly mind-blowing. And it kind of frustrates me because I wish we had this years ago. Because all those frustrating hours we spent delaying shoots, missing shots because we're fumbling around with trying to build out to you know, like do team stuff. Now they're giving us the ability to do team stuff properly, just intuitively, seamlessly. All the leads. There's gonna be a lot going on. We're gonna film saddling. So we're on a gimbal trying to film saddle. The LiDAR can handle it in the active track but it's just gonna release some stress that I'm gonna be able to AC for Connor and I'll be able to control the LiDAR, be able to see all the LiDAR and make sure that's doing its job. Uh, so I'm not a great AC. With the AMF mode, with the LiDAR, I'm a great AC. You saw this is kind of a similar setup that we we're doing for like my solo pro operator. We're splitting the team now because we have a hundred millimeter on here. It's a hundred millimeter anamorphic. We're gonna be filming him saddling up a horse and everything. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to follow that on a gimbal at a hundred millimeters. That's where this AC unit comes in. So you can see the LiDAR is picking up my face right there. We're in AMF mode. So say horse is about to enter frame and I don't want the, the LiDAR to catch it. I'm going to hold on to this. Connor, back up real quick. You can see as he backs up AMF mode, it's live tracking everything through this focus wheel. So I can hold this and I have control over it and I can take over control of what the focus is doing. You know, when the, the smart computer stuff isn't, you know, it can't comprehend what's happening in real life, the human could take back control. So this is a beautiful set. This gives me confidence in my ability to be AC now. It's pretty wild. So you guys can see there's a lot of layers going on here. LiDAR's keeping up just fine. You can see right there, it went to the horse's butt. 
you can see I'm seeing everything that's going on here. If I want to take control, so I'm going to take over the LiDAR there because he's passing through things and we're in wind mode. So right there, I'm just holding, holding the LiDAR wheel. And now it could track him just fine. So I'm going to let go of it. We're getting a bush. I'm going to hold it, holding it, let go back, back go. This is what's amazing about the AMF mode on here is for things like that, we can count on the LiDAR for the most part. Then when we need to, we take back over control. It's just crazy how seamless, how convenient everything is. I think from the viewer's perspective, it could look like a gimmick, but mm -hmm. it's it's really not a gimmick. It, it's it's completely functional and, yeah. pra and practical. Guys, I'm telling you, like throughout the years, I neglected doing gimbal shots because I was like, I don't want to spend three hours in the morning and delaying our shoe or even spending a whole day before. And then once you get onto location, all of a sudden half the stuff doesn't work. This finally relieves all that stress and all those worries. Just as Connor says, I think a lot of people might be looking at this, be like, oh, this gimmicky, are they just selling pointless stuff? Guys, I'm telling you, this solves multitude of problems and stress and time and just, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this stuff. I don't get excited over gear too often anymore unless it's new anamorphics like these right. Blazars. Um, but this, I'm truly, this is crazy. That holds the whole thing together. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we went over the transmission hub thing a million times now. What really starts to expand this into a professional setup is when you start putting the 4D grips, there's nothing else to compare on the market that has this option. There's no third party stuff. I think Tilton might have something, but it's like, I think you could put a game controller to it. No one wants to do that if you have people standing by, if you have talent that you're hiring, you're hiring location, you know, it's costing a thousand dollars to be on, on set on that day. You don't want to mess around with a freaking game controller or some like third party thing that doesn't actually really connect to it as, as intuitively as this does. This is what's cool. We don't have to get out of the car at all. I can literally go into the menu of the FX3 from the monitor here, full monitor control here. If I need to, I go into uh, the LiDAR and I can start controlling that. If you pan over to Connor over here, Connor's manning all the focus. So all I have to do, again, we're on a hundred millimeter Blazar Remus. We're really tight right now. We're gonna be trying to keep uh, horses in frame. So all I have to do is worry about doing that. You can just pause right here. Okay. All I have to worry about is keeping the, the cowboy cowgirl horses in frame. And Connor just has to make sure the ladder stays on them. Your first time ACing things? Uh, no, not not really my first time ACing, but it's definitely not something I typically do. Yeah, but so he's using the LiDAR and the AMF mode. So why go coordinate some stuff? Let's have you talk about that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So this whole system is actually really cool. One of the main things that I enjoy about this is this little LiDAR uh, box down here. So it lets you know basically what is in or out of focus. So as things turn green, it's in focus. And then as things change colors, you know that they're out of focus. So that's really handy. Additionally, one of the things that's really cool is we were riding next to the horses and as bushes and stuff were crossing through the frame, the LiDAR system would want to focus on it because it's whatever's closest to the frame. So basically I was just kind of resting my hand on the focus wheel, kind of roughly tightly. I was, cause it would kind of wrench quickly. So you kind of had to put a little bit of friction on it, but basically that would lock it from wanting to drift away from our subject. And then whenever there wasn't any bushes, I could kind of release a little bit and let the autofocus do its thing. So definitely some really cool things. You can control other things like your, you know, iris and your zoom from this, but that's not something that we're doing. But I don't know, this whole setup is definitely outside my wheelhouse, but it's not complicated at all. It's really easy to understand. That's one of the tricks to the setup is we still did the car mount stabilization, but then we go in and we turn up the, the power on all the motors. When we did that, everything kind of smoothed out even more. We're doing some epic stuff. All this is unplanned. And again, all you need is just two people to operate this. One person could operate it if they were, you know, pretty well versed and experienced in it. We're going to try that. I'm not well experienced as an AC or as a gimbal op. I usually don't do this stuff. So we're going to try that. We still might be able to try that. We could try it if you want to. Do you want to do that? And then I can do BTS and you inside. If you want me to rip it, I can. I mean, I can pull focus and I do operate gimbal. It, it might be tough to. Well, I'm just the dial. I know. And it's just, yeah. Yeah. That's all I do. Yeah. That's we can run our manual focus on here. We can also control the gimbal from here. I can turn my gyro control. So now the whole, what, what else can you do that with? There is nothing else that you can do that with. There's nothing else to compare that with. From here, we go in, we have all of our LiDAR settings like directly on the monitor. We can calibrate the lens. We can put in a 1X, 2X mode. It's picture in picture, autofocus, manual focus, flex spot, wide mode, whatever you need, you can adjust it straight from here. You can see there's no like crazy adapter cables. There's no third party stuff. There's no like, we're trying to figure out how to battery power everything. 
everything's going through one female battery into the gimbal and everything's being powered out of the gimbal. We could do the focus motor, we could do an iris motor and a zoom motor all from this. So if you're someone that's like con contemplating getting this and you're like, I don't know if I want to spend the money, go break down the other options through third parties, then go figure out how to connect it all, how it all interconnects and how seamless it's going to be, how much setup time it's going to be, all the extra pieces you need to get to get it all to like, it's like building Legos. And then just go look at this. And literally I set this all up. Everyone's filming around here. Everyone's doing their thing. And everybody has asked if I need help, but I don't because it's just like I, one person can set this up, but then we can run three to five people on this whole setup to actually run it once we start get going. So like I said, I hate doing rig stuff. I hate touching gear, honestly. And this setup, this, I'm not stressed about this at all. Like this is great. great. One more thing. One more thing that I just want to add is, you know, we spend a lot of money on cameras and this is one of those equipments that you kind of just spend on it and that's it. You're not going to be continuing yeah. and spending money on it. And if you think about the price point and what it costs, like there's nothing out there that's going to offer this type of value that's going to last you years to come. Like yeah. you don't have to upgrade. Like this thing works. And then like Cam said, with these like game joystick controllers, like when you're on set, like they're going to look at you and be like, what is this? Yeah. Like this is industry standard. Yeah. People, I like I, I could grab this. I, I know exactly how to operate this. I can hire a first AC and they know how to operate this. You give them an Xbox controller and they're going to be like, what, are we going to play video games yeah. or what? And those have connections. Like that's a great point. Like how many times do you buy something to rig this right. and you're like, oh, this doesn't work. Now I have to go on Amazon or I have right. to go look at videos and figure out how to shoehorn it yeah. to make it work. You don't have to do that with this at all. Like it literally just out of the box, you connect it all. At first, it's a little bit intimidating because you know, it's a lot yeah. of things that you have to figure out. Literally after a day of using it, you're like, oh, that was easy. I don't know why I'm stressing about that. Even when, for Connor's video, Connor, I gotta get, remember, I gotta get you in there. Yeah, yeah. Even Connor's video, he was like, oh, I'm not sure if like blah, blah, blah. I watched the video, I was like, you, 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 he got everything and he even had the directions. He was able to figure out with the cell. And he does a lot of solo gimbal type stuff, gimbal operator type stuff. So again, anybody, if Connor could do it, you can do it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so what's cool is we could simply release this from here. We're going to put the RS4 Pro, the long battery grip on there again. That's what's sick about this whole ecosystem is this, again, this is it. You just slap this onto the battery grip and you're good to go on the next part. And you still get all the wireless transmission. You still get the AC control, the gimbal control if you want it. You still get all that stuff that you need. That was the DJI action for. Yes, we're doing DJI everything. You guys just like constantly just talking about this is screaming in the camera about yeah. why this is actually something we've been wanting for years and it's saving time and effort and money and yada 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 you guys tell them why i back this up mostly uh solo gimbal op i use the rs3 pro i've used a lot of different gimbals and every time i always come back to dji right now they're just the best i mean we're not just being paid to say that in fact i'm not getting paid at all I do think that the DJI system is the best, but I think really what this new ecosystem with DJI has done is it has allowed people like myself, who's maybe not as used to working with this team setup or these higher end uh, anamorphic lenses to feel comfortable doing it and to know that it's going to be easy and that we can actually get some pretty cool stuff with very little experience. So they just basically lowered the barrier to entry to be able to use a lot of this stuff, which is pretty amazing. I think the thing with the DJI system, and like I've actually not used the DJI system in a couple gigs while I still have to gimbal operate. Um, and it was a confusion, right? You had a gimbal that was a different brand and the ring was a different brand and the wireless transmission system was a different brand, even down to the follow focus. And when you have things that don't work seamlessly, it just becomes a pain on set. Some things don't connect with others it stops working and it takes a lot of time on set and if you guys know anything about working on bigger productions more people time is gonna end up being money now we switch over a lot to the DJI stuff and what I love about it is that not only is it a complete ecosystem but every time they do upgrades to it every time there's a new thing that comes out some people might complain that the incremental upgrades aren't the biggest thing in the world they're not game-changing or they're not so monumental from the other stuff they might have come out with but that's kind of a good thing I don't think they're creating an ecosystem where you have to go and purge everything that you have in order to get the next upgrade of stuff. They just keep adding into things so you always have the choice of what you want to kind of customize your professional scenario to. And I think 
if you're somebody that maybe even got on the RS2, you could still use some of the stuff that's going to come out now. And if you're using RS3, you could use even more. If you're using RS4, you could also do that as well. And the Focus Pro is kind of gimbal agnostic, so you can do those things. And the wireless transmission system, you're eventually going to need to use it on Teams, whether it's a client monitor, whether someone's pulling focus, or there's just other things that work through that entire system. And the fact that you do it all in one house and you don't have to worry about communication issues and just wasting time, I think that's a giant plus. Boom. All right, guys, so this is my take now. Yeah. <laughs> you can see I'm all done packing up. Focus Pro. RS4 Pro stuff. In reality, none of us are trying to go buy any of this. We're just trying to show it off to you. Like DJI is not saying, go and upgrade everything. They made it to where, even if you already have the RS3 Pro, you can still go get the LiDAR grip. You can still get all this AC unit stuff. If you have the 4D, you can still use the, the hand grips from there. Like, you know, they're, they're not forcing you to do anything. Yeah, and I want to piggyback off what Tofi was saying and what you were saying kind of is, they didn't have to make all this stuff backwards compatible, but it's really cool that they are. So it's, for instance, I own the RS3 Pro and I can use all of this same system. As well as it's also affordable. I mean, some people might disagree with this, but when you go to the individual items, like getting some of the stuff for the LiDAR and uh, getting some of the stuff even for the gimbals, like it's not that much more costly than it was the other gimbals that came out. And as well as like, if you even go on the B&H website, if you can go to go buy these things, you can buy parts individually based on what you already have or what you already like don't have. So if you want to just get the Focus Pro grip because you have the LiDAR and you want to upgrade and you just want to stick with your motors, you just buy the Focus Pro handle and maybe buy like one of the motors and you don't have to buy the whole combo. Yeah. You just buy them piece by piece. And if you want to get the RS4 Pro without the combo, you just get it without the combo. If you want to get it with all the stuff, you can get it with everything you want. So like even in the situation where you want to buy something, you don't have to buy everything, which maybe wasn't the case from some of the older systems. You might have had to buy a bunch of different things. And I've used the other lighter iterations, even outside of things like the Ronin 4D. But now you can kind of piece your way into it and you could grow into the system. Yeah. I think DJI is making a system you can grow into. Yeah. This again, this is why I keep saying ecosystem. Because it's you can buy the individual parts for the jobs that they do, or you can invest into the ecosystem. That's what DJI is kind of doing to where as your career grows, if you just start investing into this, you're going to be able to grow into this and not have to fidget around and deal with all the stuff we've had to deal with the past years of, you know, all the frustrations and time wasted and, and wasting time on set. You don't have to do that anymore. Like, I wish this was out years ago when I first started, got, like when I first got started. Yes, at first, at first, if you don't own any of this, it might be a little bit overwhelming to invest into it, but you do one piece at a time. Uh, I will say to you about the monitors, I know I own a few different systems for wireless monitoring. I honestly, the DJI wireless system, just it's so fluid and easy to use. And the fact that I don't have to like, again, get a bunch of adapter cables and all that. I end up just using that even for rigs that have nothing to do with DJI stuff, nothing to do with gimbal stuff, nothing that has to do with like uh, uh, LiDAR stuff. I still end up using it just because it's so streamlined and they have some of the best wireless technology. So again, the whole point is it's an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem. Again, go do your guys' own math. Build out the, the platforms and the rigs that you need to build out. Go price it out. Go figure out how you're going to rig it all out. Go figure out all the pieces. As we said earlier, when you go and start building this up, all of a sudden you're like, shit. Like, uh, I need this cable now. Oh, I need to go watch this video. Oh, I need these two other things now. And then you have to, you're fidgeting with it. I'm telling you guys, the frustration of trying to get this shit together, it's it's out the door now. It's insane. So go do your math, break all that down, and then go and look at this. It might be less, it might be the same, it might be more. Just imagine if it's more, all the frustration you're gonna, you're gonna save. If it's the same, imagine this, the system you grow into, if it's cheaper, then, you know, that makes total sense. I would even go as far as saying, try to calculate all the time it's going to take to connect all that stuff when it stops working because it's not the same system. And then multiply that by how many hours, like how much it is per hour for you to be on set. That's also going to factor into the price because there's nothing worse than having a gimbal ring that doesn't work with your wireless transmission system and you're wasting 30, 40 minutes trying to get it to work. Celsius, I need sponsorship. Sponsorship. Goofy, Goofy dropped my second Celsius on this trip. Okay, first of all, the first one was wind. And <laughs> where Celsius? <laughs> this is how addicted I am. Look. You got Kofi booty juice in this. You got dirt in this. Hang on, hang on. No, no, don't drink that. That's worth a lot of money. <laughs>